Inspection records show the limousine involved in that deadly crash in New York over the weekend should not have even been on the road. Its braking system failing a test just last month. Well, the NTSB is also investigating after 20 people, including the limo driver, died in that crash. And it got us asking here, what are the state and federal regulations for limos? And how are local companies held accountable? Robert Bradfield has been taking a closer look. On the sides of the car, you'll see the, the numbers and the name to show who the car belongs to. So if there's any problem, they can report us. David Bryant is the owner of Louisville's Ambassador Capital Limousine Service. It's a business he started from the ground up 31 years ago. Part of that longevity and success, he says, is in part because of state and federal government reporting procedures. Inspect whether it's uh, how the brakes feel, how the turn signals are working, all the lights. Those inspections happen every day. His drivers keep a log of any issues, and if any of the vehicles need maintenance, he pulls them out of his inventory. Bryant says the state and the U.S. Department of Transportation look over his vehicles at least once a year and can have access to his files at any time. State police can come in and do the, which is vehicle enforcement, can come in and, and which they do, they come in and inspect our vehicles periodically and put stickers on them to let us know that those are okay. He also requires employees to pass a driving test and they must hold the correct type of license. A commercial driver's license is needed for 15 or more passengers. New York investigators say the limo driver of Saturday's crash didn't have the right license to carry the 17 passengers who were killed. In New York State, a limo with 15 or more seats available, excluding the driver, falls under the definition of a bus and requires a passenger endorsement, a P endorsement. The operator of the limo involved in this crash required the P endorsement, which he did not have. Bryant says he has no problem refusing a job to anyone who he thinks is not capable of safely driving a vehicle with his name on it. We would not have a problem to tell you you weren't uh, qualified to drive our vehicles. Now, New York investigators are also looking into text messages and whether the driver or anyone else was sending text messages. Bryant telling me he has a GPS in every vehicle and prohibits his employees from using their phones while driving. Robert Bradfield, 11 at 11.